morning, children. God is good all the time. And that is nature, and that deserves a great high five. I've just removed my mask because I'm away from home, and so that I can talk to you clearly. I hope you always wear your mask anytime you leave home. I also hope you wash your hands regularly to keep yourself safe from this environment that we are in today. Before we continue with our lesson today, let us pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for being with us throughout last week. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have kept us safe, well, and healthy. Thank you even for those that you have made well that were not well. Lord, we invite you into this Sunday school session that we have this morning. We pray for your uh, teaching, that Lord Jesus Christ, you may teach us your word so that, God, we can grow in our relationship with you. Come and join us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Children, can you all remember what we learned last week? For those who can remember, good. Last week, our lesson was, trust me, I have a plan. Do you remember? Yes, we learned that God has a good plan for us. Even when we don't know that plan, all we need to do is to trust him. And God uses impossible situations and difficult times such as this to help us increase our faith. Can anyone remember last week's memory verse? I tried not to look anywhere from last week, and I'll try it. You can check it out. I hope I get it right. Our memory verse came from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, and verses 13 and 14. And it says, do not be afraid, stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord is going to bring you today. The Israelites that you see today, you will not see them again. The Lord will fight for you, and all you need is stand still. Children, I hope I got it right, and I also hope you got it right too. You can check it out. Now, we'll move into today's lesson. Our lesson for today is stay safe, keep away from sin. Now, in this season of coronavirus, we've been told over and over and over again how we can keep ourselves safe from the dangerous coronavirus. And I'm sure we all know it to heart, and we can say it. One, wash your hands as often as you can with soap and water. Two, wear a mask. Three, keep a social distance from each other. And four, stay at home unless you must live. Well, all these things are for our good and they are to keep our, cell, our body safe from the dangerous coronavirus, as we all know. But what about our spiritual life? We too need to keep our spiritual life safe. And that's the reason for our topic today. Stay safe. No, not stay safe. Did I say stay safe? No, 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 I mean, uh, yeah, stay safe and keep away from sin. Right, I got it right. Did you get it right? Yeah, let's say it all together. Stay safe, keep away from sin. Uh, in today's lesson, you're going to learn what sin is. What happens when we sin? Is sin dangerous? And how can we keep ourselves from sin? What is sin, children? Sin is anything we do or say or think which does not please the Lord and is against the word of the Lord that is given to us in the Bible. When the Bible tells us to be kind and we choose to not to be kind by kicking people or being rude and showing all manner of being unkind to someone else, that way we sin and God is not pleased. God tells us to honor our mother and father. Do we honor our mother and father all the time? When your mother or your father sends you or asks you to do anything and you do it cheerfully, you have done a good thing that pleases the Lord and honors your parents. That way, we do not sin. Is sin dangerous? What happens when we sin? In God's eyes, sin is dangerous. Sin separates us from God. God cannot have a relationship with sin. So when we live in sin, we, 
God cannot dwell in us or we cannot have a relationship with him. I'll tell you an example. We all know the story of Adam and Eve. At the very beginning, God, Adam, and Eve all live together in the Garden of Eden. And remember who God is. God is a king. And living with a king is good. And God was very clear to Adam and Eve what they should not do. I believe there are many other things of what they should do. And God told them, do not eat of the fruit in the tree in the middle of the garden. That is very clear. And we all know what happened. Eve ate the fruit. And Eve shared the fruit with Adam. Adam ate. And God was not happy. This made God unhappy. And it displeased God. And immediately, Adam and Eve were locked out of the Garden of Eden. And they missed all the good relationship that they were enjoying with God. They were separated from God. So really, sin is dangerous because it separates us from God. But all is not lost. God is such a kind God and loving Father. He always wants to keep a relationship with us. And he always wants to make things right with with us. He's always ready to forgive us of our sins, make things right with him, and cleanse us from all our guilt whenever we ask for forgiveness. And this we can be assured from the book of First John, chapter 1 and verses 9. The Lord says, if we confess all our sins, he's ready and just, he's faithful and ready to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Wow, what a loving God we have that he's able to restore our relationship anytime we forgive him. Now, God was able to restore the relationship that we lost when Adam and Eve sinned by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross. The blood of Jesus on the cross cleanses us, washes us, and makes us as whiter than snow so that we can have a relationship with God because God is a sinless, pure God. And every day, the Lord is inviting adults as well as us children to come and be part of this relationship. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 20, the Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, knock, knock. Whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into his house and I'll eat with them and they will eat with me. God is inviting us to be part of this relationship. Now, there's a part for each one of us to play for, to be part of this relationship. Mommy cannot do it for us. The church cannot do it for us. Our friends cannot do it for us. It's us who have to do it ourselves. And that is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts. And the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then we are saved. And from there, we begin to have a relationship with Christ. We become members of the family of God. So how can we keep ourselves from sin? We can keep ourselves from sin by accepting the Lord of Jesus Christ into our lives. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives, and just like you know, washing our hands during this season of coronavirus with soap and water. Jesus Christ also washes us and cleanses us from all sin. But remember, water alone cannot kill the virus, the coronavirus. It's the power of the soap and the power of the sanitizer that actually kills the virus. And when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, God fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit, which helps us overcome sin. As we all come to know that sin is dangerous, we cannot make it our own on our own. And so God empowers us with the power of the Holy Spirit to help us overcome sin. 
The second thing we have to do is to read the Bible and memorize verses of the Bible, just like we did last week. And the reason why we have to memorize our verses is so that we can have them in our fingertips. And when we are just about to sin, we can remember what the word of the Lord says. And the third thing we have to do is, when we sin, it's not the end of our relationship with Christ. No, no, no. The Lord always invites us and asks us to confess our sins to him because he's ready and just to forgive us our sins. He's so slow to anger. He will not take us away once you're members of his family, but he'll keep forgiving us until the day we'll live with him in heaven. So today we are giving you a chance uh, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask, Teacher Maureen is going to lead you through this session of inviting you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ for those that are ready. Thank you for being here today. And we pray that the Lord may bless you and keep you throughout next week. It's from me, Teacher Salome. Bye-bye. Thank you, Teacher Salome, for the lesson that you've brought to us today. Do you remember the memory verse we've learned? Let me read it for you. It's Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It says, If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from death, you will be saved. It's something very important that we've learned today, children. Being saved. That means welcoming Jesus into our lives to be the king of our hearts. Would any of you want to do this today? Would any of you want to pray to invite Jesus into your hearts to be king of your life? Let's pray together. Pray aloud and repeat after me. Let's put our hands together. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for paying the price for my sins. Today I confess my sins. I pray that you may wash me with the blood and cleanse me white as snow. I invite you to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life and the King of my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And if you've prayed that prayer with me, this day you are a part of God's family. And one day you'll be together with God in heaven forever and ever. We celebrate with you and we welcome you to be a member of God's family. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening to our Sunday school lesson today. We hope to see you next Sunday. And we hope that all of you will remember the Sunday school Vas memory verse for today. Until next Sunday, bye-bye.